Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you as I offer these words this morning, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This should be very familiar to you. For Sunday after Sunday, we sing in our Sanctus these very words. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I have a friend who says that every Sunday is practice for Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and ultimately for Easter. So these words that feel familiar to you are important, for they help us to understand exactly who this Jesus is that is entering Jerusalem. In very brief Words, we are given a symbol, a sign, a narrative about this person of Jesus. And it is through the Sanctus that I want to offer a few words this morning. The first part of the Sanctus, the holy, holy, holy part that we will sing in just a minute together is from Isaiah 6. And it's that passage in Isaiah where after King Uzziah has died, the Lord appears before the prophet Isaiah on a throne and in great majesty with seraphs all around covering their faces. They sing and call out to the Lord who sits upon his throne, the God of all. Holy, holy, holy are you. You are the Lord of hosts, and the whole earth fills, is filled with your glory. That sense that his robes, even as Isaiah describes this, this prophetic image, this moment in which God is so great that even his robes would fill the whole temple of Israel. That is how grandiose this almighty God, emphasizing, of course, God's holiness and God's holy otherness. There is an old uh, philosopher who said, this is the mysterium tremendum et fascinans. This is the numinous, the inspiring. How could you have such a vision of God and not feel this tremendous sense of awe and inspiration? a sense of God's greatness and majesty and the power of this God. Not a God who simply created me, but a God who had created the whole universe. Holy is this God, holy other than ourselves. This is a God worth kneeling before. This is a God one should tremble before. This is the God we don't think a whole lot about (laughs) because it's almost too scary to think about this God and how holy other we are. That is, if we believe in a God who is almighty. Reverend Childs, a professor of Hebrew in the Old Testament, said the holiness in the Old Testament, it's not an ethical quality. It's not about God's goodness. It's about God's nature. That this God that we believe in is greater than you could even imagine. 
And even Isaiah's words fail to describe the God he witnesses to. Now, if you know the rest of the story, Isaiah in that moment feels so unworthy and so sinful, so other than this God that he has to be cleansed. But this God, this holy other, wants Isaiah to hear his words and to speak on his behalf. So he sends a coal to bless Isaiah on his lips and on his mouth that he may speak with and tell of what he has seen in this amazing moment. And so it is that we think, think about our Eucharist for a moment, right? So let's go back to that moment. Confession, absolution, before we begin to sing holy, holy, holy. God's absolution, so that we may hear and see what happens here. A liturgical acting out, if you will, of Isaiah's vision. That this holiness, this uniqueness, though, and this is where it's important this week, is represented in the person of Jesus. When they began to say, blessed is the one who comes in the Lord, Lord's name, when they began to lay down their cloaks, when they began to do and make these actions before Jesus, they are saying it isn't just an Isaiah, it's not just an Elijah, as in the Passion reading, this is God, God has come near to us, even as Jesus says, the kingdom of God has come close, go out and proclaim it, this God has come close to us, save us, for that is what, if we were to translate the Greek In that moment, as they make their way with palm branches, they're saying, blessed is the one who comes. Blessed is he, Jesus. The kingdom of God has come near. Save us. Save us. This is the meek and humble king prophesied in Zechariah. Now, what I want to draw to our attention is that in the Eucharist, we are seeing that just as Jesus, every Sunday, right, preparation for this week, for Easter, we sing the Sanctus, and then what happens? We reenact the Lord's Supper to remind us the food and table that God has given us through the person of Jesus. Just as this week, as we go to Monday, Thursday next, we will reenact, we will speak of teach on, preach on the Last Supper. The whole Eucharistic liturgy then coming together in this moment, signposts along the way. May we watchers awake, awake watchers and see. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy is his name. Holy other, holy different than us. I do not know what questions you all brought with you today. I couldn't possibly imagine them. I do not know what your week's life has been like. Perhaps in this moment, you are hoping that this is the God who is going to change our world and make it better. Because maybe this week you've had enough. Maybe you came here hoping that this God that we sing, blessed is the one, has come to heal you for whatever it is that ails you. And God knows when I'm honest, I got some healing I need, right? And I need some healing for family members and some friends. So maybe that's the God you're hoping this is. Maybe it's the fulfillment of what you've been looking for. Maybe you're thinking today, I'm just looking. I'm just searching for something. God, give me a sign. 
And maybe that's what you're hoping this God is. As I imagine many of those along the way into Jerusalem were hoping. And so we find out our hopes and dreams for who this is are the same. I do not want... I do not want to suggest that what you came in here looking for is of little value at all. Because I do think God is present with us. I do think God offers us healing and peace beyond understanding. I do believe those things. I do believe there is one God. This is the God that we're looking for. I believe all of those things. But the greatest things in this world that we should be concerned about is evil and death. So do not, in this week, get mired in our own desires of who this prophet is that makes their way to this altar and provides us food for life that maybe we come to this altar for food that's consolation only and not for food for the journey, food that our spirits may be enlivened and wakened to see that this God at the end of this week when we rehearse his death upon the cross and resurrection has said evil will not have the last word. That is what the holy God says through the action of Jesus. Evil will not prevail. Evil will not have the last word in this world, and neither will death. There will be nothing that keeps you from me, Isaiah. Nothing, nothing. None of those fears and concerns that you brought in with you today, none of that will keep you from me because I love you, and I have sent Jesus to you, my son, my beloved, with whom I'm well pleased, and he brings you to me through the tomb. This is the Jesus that we should kneel before and the God we should kneel before and say, holy, holy, holy are you God Almighty. For you have done something greater than I could ask or imagine. You have brought down death itself. You have brought down evil. We may not see that in our lifetime, but there will be no final word when God has put death into the grave. And each one of us will be like the icon, the heroine of hell, when our time comes. That icon of Jesus reaching down and pulling us up. For nothing, Paul says, will separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing. No powers. No principalities, no politics, nothing, not even our own failures will separate us from the love of God. So yes, on this Palm Sunday, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is Jesus who comes in the name of the Lord. And thank you, thank you, holy God, thank you. Let us throw everything that we have, our very selves, before him and give thanks to the Lord, for great is his name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.